Hello and welcome to a lecture for the 16th Annual Kosciuszko Chair Conference and the 4th Oscar Halecki Symposium. This year's virtual conference and speakers will focus on the topic of the intermarium and trimarium, concepts and new realities. Today's joint virtual symposium is organized by the Institute of World Politics and the Oscar Halecki Institute in commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the passing away of Professor Oscar Halecki. For those who are new, IWP is a graduate school of national security, intelligence, and international affairs. We offer a doctoral program, seven master's degree programs, including two online MAs, and 18 certificates of graduate study. If you're interested in learning more about us, please feel free to visit us at iwp.edu. On behalf of IWP, I would like to thank all of our supporters who make IWP events possible. Today, we'll be hearing from Professor Thaddeus Rutkowski, who will deliver a presentation titled, People's Poland Towards Oscar Halecki and His Works, 1945 to 1990. Professor Thaddeus Rutkowski is a historian of modern history and a professor of history at the University of Warsaw. Professor Rutkowski specializes in political history of Poland and Eastern Europe in the 20th century, science policy, and the history of historiography. Professor Rutkowski has published several works, including Historical Sciences in Poland, 1944 to 1970, Political and Organizational Issues, as well as Adam Bromberg, and encyclopedias, a page from the history of the Polish intelligentsia in the Polish People's Republic, and Panaska, Nobles Fascist, Poland in the Soviet Propaganda, Culture, and Historiography, 1917 to 1945. Please welcome Professor Tadeusz Mutowski. There was no record of censorship in his I article on the marriage of Queen Jadwiga in 1386, 1947 in the Krakow Tygodnik Powszechny. Immediately afterwards, however, Halecki's name was subject to a publication ban, and Halecki was emanated from cultural and scientific circulation in Poland. From the communist ruling in Poland, not only obviously Halecki's anti communist was unacceptable, but also his view of Central and Eastern Europe in the federalist spirit and ideological Catholicism which resulted in a view of history from the point of view of christ centered civilization. Halecki was openly criticized by the communist authorities in Poland in the early 1950s in connection with the institutional and ideological reconstruction of Polish science, including historical sciences. In 1950, preparation for the first Polish Science Congress began, which was to proceed to the establishment of the Polish Academy of Science organized on the Soviet model. As, as part of this preparation, a report of, on historical sciences was prepared, prepared by the subsection of the historical sciences of the Congress. The draft of the paper was written by the main implementer of the Communist Party's policy in historical sciences, Professor Janna Kormanova, and was corrected by a team of leading historians at that time, gaining official status, and as such was presented at the first Congress of Polish Science. In summary, the state of Polish science in the bourgeois era and outlining development plans within the framework of the current Marxist ideology. However, the main criticism of the paper was directed against researcher and scientific schools present in the People's Republic of Poland. In fact, there was no criticism of emigre scholars. Oscar Hayes, his name appears in the report on the subsection of the history of the Congress on, in the context of criticism of Poland's Eastern policy in the years 1918-1939, considered imperialist imperialist. As it was written in the report, the, the well glorification of the Polish Lithuanian Union was an ideological foundation for the annexion, annexation of Belarusian and Ukrainian lands, a historical approval, and for the openly annexationist problem of the Vilnius Bisons. Um, it was malicious name of religious conservatives, and for the federalist concept of the Piłsudski movement, and for the anti-Soviet missionary imperialist plans of the Vatican. In this context, the work of Oskar Halecki, the history of the Union, was mentioned. Was mentioned. Further, 
writing about Halevsky in the Rory Achievement, Halevsky chapter, the, the two last Jagiellonians included in the second volume of the Political History of Poland, published by the Polish Academy of Art and Sciences in 1923. Halevsky was described as an agent of Vatican and American imperialism and the fierce enemy of the People's Republic of Poland. As written, Halecki, faithful to the scientific bourgeois concept of political history, he completely ignores the issue of economics, ignores all, uh, economics, ignores all symptoms of class struggle, does not see or understand the basic element of the history of the Golden Age, feudalism and its Polish specificity. The inability to scientifically understand the past, scientific blindness goes hand in hand with imperialist tendencies, nationalism and clericalism. The report did not contain any criticism of Polish immigration historiography, probably due to its decidedly internal Polish character and the poor orientation of its main author, Professor Żanna Kormanowa, in her achievements. However, it was noticed that Halewski remained a member of the Polish Academy of Arts and Sciences and was formally mentioned as a collabor collaborator of the, this academic historical commission, together with other Polish historians remaining in exile. This fact was described in the paper as an astonishing anachronism. During the proceeding of the first Congress of Polish Sciences and the discussion on the report of Halewski's name did not appear. The participant of the meeting, in line with the intention of the authorities, focused on the situation in domestic science. Interestingly, Halewski's name was not mentioned during the proceeding of the first methodological conference of Polish historians organized at the turn of 19. 51 and 1952, which was intended to create the ideological basis for the communist reconstruction of historical science in Poland. The criticism of the current historiography was directed at domestic historians, especially living ones. The situation changed after the establishment of the Institute of History of the Polish Academy of Sciences in January 1953 and the related reorganization of Polish historical science on the Soviet model. The new institute was to take over all historical research and its organization was carried out under the strict supervision of the Communist Party authorities. The director of the institute was a non-party member of Tadeusz Mantoifel, surrounded by loyal and committed members of the Communist Party and supporters of the authorities. The Institute of the, History of the Polish Academy of Science took over the publishing of the leading Polish historical magazine, Quartalnik Historyczny, Historical Quarterly, from the Polish Historical Society. Edited by Professor Bogusław Leśniadorski, Deputy Director of the Institute of History, it became the main body of official historical science in the People's Republic of Poland. In the program, programmatic article opening the first issue of the magazine under the new editor, it was stated that it was necessary for, for the nation and, and the state to develop a complete, correct and scientific image of its, of its past, cleans of noble and bourgeois distortions. Of the 24 pages of the text, more than one is devoted to Oskar Halewski. He was the only living Polish historian who was not only criticized, but even mentioned by name in this text. A way typically of the era, immigrant historians, including Halewski, were accused of cosmopolitanism and rejecting national traditions in favor of transatlantic culture. The scientists, Himself, title Ritter von Halecki, he used this title in one, in one in the, of his early publications, was presented as a glorifier of the Polish Lithuanian Union and the achievements of the Polish plow in the East, which was in line with the interests of the Polish landowners and bourgeoisie, and at the same, uh, same time, in line with the scope of the increasingly the more reaching tentacles of imperialism and the Vatican against the country of the Soviets. Halewski's publication for the period of World War I, sorry, of the Jagiellonian Union, were mentioned here. It was then stated that Halewski put himself at the service of United States policy, at the service of the neo Nazi government in Bonn, and renounced the Polish border on the other. As proof of these thesis, examples, but not quote from Halewski's books, Historia Polski, and the limits and division, and division of European history are given. The latter was written about as follows. Halecki returns to the Jagiellonian idea and in the final of his arguments, by referring to the ideas of Wilson and Pius XII, he combines his desires even more with the propaganda of the new era of the world, 
which is simply to be characterized by an increasingly complicated closer union of free Europe with America in the Atlantic community. Halecki's view were contrasted with patriotism and humanity of the Polish working people who, as it was written, increasing hated towards everything that imposes oppression and plunder, towards those who live and want to live at the expense of the suffering of hundreds of millions of people, at the same time ignites, ignites one of the most beautiful feelings, the love of, this, of his country, related to a friendly and honest attitude towards all other peoples, causes the decision to devote oneself to the cause of the nation. It is, it is interesting why Hayeski was chosen as a symbol of betrayal and all evil among the large group of Polish immigrant historians who were, was, uh, who were as a politically involved as he was known, such as Professor Marian Kukil and Stanislav Kot. It seems that Halecki's stay in the United States, which is presented in the Soviet and Polish propaganda as a symbol of all aiming, was decisive here. A significant influence may have been the fact that the probable, out, the probable, out, probable author of this article, Professor Bogusław Leśniedorski, coming from, from Krakow, like Kukil and Kot, did not want to offend his environment with criticism from people he knew and appreciated. Halecki deprived of his support of his students, marginalized in Poland, and having view not shared by the vast majority of his students, an easier target. One of the reasons was certainly Halecki's considerable activity in the Western world, surpassing activity and influence of other Polish, Polish scientists in exile. The above mentioned programmatic text of the new editor of Fatalic Storyczny had a continuation in relation to Halecki. Already in the first issue of the magazine from 1953, a text by the then young historian Janusz Tardiet appeared, appeared I titled Historical Falsehood and Betrayal of the, of the Nation in the words of Oskar Halecki. It was an extension of who was presented briefly in the program article to issue earlier. Tardiet extensively characterized Halecki's scientific view, arguing with the myths of the scientist as an uncompromising patriot and the great scientist who never bent facts to fit theories but showed the real trend of history. In this regard, characterizing Halecki's scientific achievement, he emphasized that it showed the special historical role and historical mission of Poland, consisting in the position of the um, bulwark of Christianity and Western culture extended rather the, to the East whose task was to defend this value against constant invasions of Asia, occurring in various forms. According to Tazby, the consequences of Halecki's position were not only systematic attacks on the Soviet Union and its policies, but also a chauvinistic attitude towards Russia, Russia, Russians, and Russian culture. In line with the then Polish United Workers' Party policy, Talbot combined Halecki's awakening of national chauvinism towards Russia with his diagnosed lack of faith in his own nation, reducing his contribution to world culture to a minimum and recognizes his only reproductive role in relation to Western civilization. He further defended and scientifically justified Halecki's method of nobility, rehabilitated the role of the nobility, and put forward a thesis about the cultural continuity of Poland. He linked Halecki's view formulated in this way with his origins, Richter von Halecki, but above all this, uh, his role as an apologist for landlordism and feudalism, writing at the request of the class. Obviously, he also subjected very sharp criticism to the Christian inspirations of Halecki's work. In this context, he accused Halecki of departing from scientific principles of bourgeois historiography by, adop by adopting the principle of supplementing missing sources with a specifically understood tradition, reducing history to the role of the science examining the manifestation of God's will in his story in a supposedly objective and impartial way. He considered this to be symptoms of extreme retrogression on the hypocrisy of bourgeois historical science in the era of imperialism, which signified the lack of value of scientific research by the methods. In this it is difficult is that by uh, presenting Halecki methodology uh, in this tendentious and distorted uh, way, 
Uh, Talbir was unintentionally criticizing the methods of historiography that were practiced and promoted in people's Poland at that time. Uh, describing uh, Halecki's scientific career, Talbir argued that the reason for its rapid development was Halecki's early support of the Galician Conservative and the Church spheres who were in power. This patronage, after Poland's regained independence, was to turn Halecki into service of anglo French imperialism. Tazbir attributed Halecki's justification of Poland's right to the Eastern lands and attachment to the traditions of Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth to this. In the same spirit of the, of the need to justify Polish imperial plans to the East, he interpreted Halecki's history of the Jagiellonian Union. The author of the article he entitled the analysis of his scientific and journalistic activity in the years 1921-1939 in the circle of influence of fascists. He assessed Halecki's attitude on the eve of the war, as was the kind of subverse, <coughs> um, uh, which was based on Halecki's hope for an agreement with the Germans and distrust towards the Soviet Union. This space is devoted to Halecki activities during World War II. In the text, Halecki only noted the historian's consistent anti-Soviet attitude. The fragment on Halecki's post-war activity was much more extensive, untitled, in the service of American imperialists. In this part, Halecki's ritual criticism of the Christ and the world and his anti-Sovietists, a supporter of the anti-Soviet crusade, was combined with defining him as a supporter of a new world war, new aggression, destruction, and victims. He also highlighted the favorable opinions about Halecki from German historians, summarizing them as follows. As we can see, the circle has closed. Halecki found recognition among the apologists of German imperialists and supporters of Drangnach Osten, i.e. among the followers of the same view of, as the political alliance from the beginning of his career from 1914 to 19. 18. The survivors of German imperialism, together with Halecki, the agent of international counter revolution, have a common protector, United States imperialism, and they are not divided by any conflicting interests. Summarizing his argument, the author of, this, of the article highlights Halecki's consistent betrayal of the Polish nation at every stage of, of its development, as a faithful historian of his social class. In this way, through the pen of the future well-known and titled historian, Halecki, as the only Polish emigre historian, received extensive and sharp criticism in the pages of main scientific journal in Stalinist Poland. There is no doubt that Janusz Stalbir, when an employee of the Institute of History of the Polish Academy of Science, a master in student's writing his doctorate under the supervision of Halecki's student, Professor Wesław Tomkiewicz, did not write his article on his own initiate, but was a tool of older colleagues, most likely Bogusław Lechnidorski, although the initiative of in this matter could have come from higher circles of the leadership of Polish science. What is striking in this text, typical of, of, of contemporary journalism rather than highly ideologized scientific publication, is the accumulation of evidence and the dismissal of the hero achievements from very scientific and Value, scientific value. After this sudden outburst of criticism of Halecki by the official historiography of the Polish People's Republic, there was silent for several years. There is no mention of it either in historical literature or in, in press. The Sarney Halecki was erased from the biography of Polish history published in the of History, uh, Polish Academy of Science. The situation changed uh, to a small extent after the partial, partial liberalization of the communist system in Poland, which took place in 1956-1957. Due to, due to its consistently anti-communist attitude and close connection with the Catholic Church, Halecki's words did not return to scientific circulation in Poland, but therefore, but for a short period, it was possible to mention his name and write about his scientific activity. And so, in 1957, the Historical Quarterly published in the Scientific Life Abroad section a reported article by medievalist Tadeusz Oslanowski from the Institute of the History of Material Culture of the Polish Academy of Science, in which he discussed the magazine of the Polish Scientific Institute, the Polish Review. 
in addition to the characteristics of the magazine itself, Rodanowski characterized Halecki's article containing an assessment of the achievements of Polish national historiography based on the book published by a Polish historian on, okay, the, on the occasion of the 10th International Congress of Historians in Rome uh, in 1955. Referring to Halecki's very critical assessment of the Congress papers included in the book, Rodanowski accused him of criticizing text on the subject of which he was not a specialist, which in his opinion led to skepticism. He emphasized that Halecki, Halecki's position critically of the findings of Polish medievalists, Alexander Gieser and Henry Kowmiański, based on the results of archaeological research conducted as a part of the Commission for Research of the region, Origins of Polish State, is based on the perception of the essence of the historical process in the traditionally understood Christian spirit of Poland, and especially the exaggerated role of the church and the papacy. The review further argued that Halecki's criticism of the research conducted in the People's Republic of Poland in the field of the history in the Middle Ages and the Renaissance accused him of narrow perception of history through the prism of, polit of political and church history. With reference to the Enlightenment in the 18th and 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, he noted that Halecki focused his main effort on showing those points that differ from some of earlier Polish approaches, seeing in them an overall understood influence of politics and science. It is no wonder that the Rosanowski criticism of Halecki's view was conducted without invective or pejorative terms, although it is clearly bore the mark of the official interpretation of the historiography of the Polish People's Republic. After the stabilization of communist power in Poland in the end of the 50s, Halecki's name again ceased to appear in scientific circulation in the country. The only exception was the mention of his name in the report of the 11th National Congress of Historical Sciences in Stockholm and the 12th Congress in Vienna. Oskar Halecki's involvement in the celebration of the millennium of Poland Baptist in the West over time drew the attention of the Polish authorities to him. A manifestation of this was an extensive review of Oskar Halecki's book, The Millennium of Europe, 1964, in the theoretical organ of the Central Committee of the Polish United Workers Party. The author of the review was a Krakow historian of law and ideas, publicist, public professor Konstanty Grzybowski, associated with the Polish United West Party and playing an important role in the anti-church propaganda of that period. The title of the review fully reflected the meaning uh, uh, reflected its meaning. Grzybowski suggested to the reader that Halecki Consciously omitted a significant part of the achievement of the historiography of the People's Republic of Poland in order to avoid taking into account researchers' findings that did not sweep out. He also rejected the religious inspiration of Halecki's thesis, stating that the view that there are regularities of historical development and that the task of science is to look for these regularities is opposed by Halecki's view that the history of humanity is a shapeless a chaos of phenomena that cannot be ordered according to something immanent in this phenomena, inherent criteria, but the only criterion allowing for the assessment of human history is a metaphysical, mystical, and chiliastic criterion taken from the outside this history, outside human activity, the criterion of divine judgment. Emphasizing the author's omission of economic issue, economic condition of human activity, and failure to notice dark moments in the history of Catholic Church and the papacy, he considered it a complete anachronism to the context of modern science. He further emphasized that it does not take into account the contemporary achievement of Catholic teaching. Therefore, he considered it an expression of a certain political direction in, in contemporary Catholicism, emphasizing it is also not, not an expression of the view of a group without influence and without significance in the contemporary Catholic world. As Grzybowski argued, it can be seen as a warning signal for, for those who, regardless of whether they are Catholic or not, want to the peaceful development of humanity and has it been shaped by the history of Europe and the world as not as Professor Halecki would like to see. This review 
However, did not result in wider interest in the person of Halecki among, among the Polish people's propaganda. Uh, a breakthrough into, in this matter occurred the non, only at the end of 1965, when Polish bishops present and the Second Vatican Council sent letters to the Episcopal Conferences of individual countries with information about the celebration of the millennium of the Baptist of Poland. Among them was also the message of the Polish bishop to bear German brothers in Christ, Christ pastoral office. Sent without consulting the authorities of the Polish People's Republic, it caused very, very violent reaction. Even stronger because the response of the German Episcopate published on December 7, 1965, contained statements that could not satisfy the Polish bishop or the, or the faithful. In response, the Polish bishop, in, in a statement of December 7, stated that the existence of these discrepancies between Polish and German sides, and in order to further that appropriate and mutual understanding of historical discrepancies, the Polish bishop decided to send their brothers in Germany the German translation of the history of Poland by Oskar Halec. According and to later, later information from primate of Poland, Stefan Wyszyński, the episodes were referring to the book, The History of the Church in Poland, which was imprinted at the time the message was written. Nevertheless, the announcement referred to the history of Poland by Halecki and the authorities of the Polish People's Republic referred it to a book with that title, which the Polish Church did not correct. The matter the letter caused a very sharp reaction from the authorities of the Polish Repub People's Republic, which on one, um, the one hand denied the right of the Church in Poland to speak out in matters of international politics, and on the other hand con considered in a great opportunity to undermine the authority of the Church. Starting from December 10, 1965, a huge propaganda campaign was launched, the victim of which was also Professor Halecki mentioned in the Episcopate announcement of December 7. Halecki criticism took an, an important place in the speech of the first secretary of the Central Committee of the Polish Union, United Workers' Party, was Gomułka, at the meeting of the, of the National Committee of, Nation, of the National Unity Front on January 14, 1966. He spoke about the history of Poland as follows. I will not deal with the content of all historical events, presented in, a, in an extremely shallow manner at the Sunday school level. He further fragments of the 1958 edition of his, of, this, of this book, in which Halewski wrote about Poles hopes for the United States and the belief that Poland and the countries of Eastern Europe would gain freedom. He recalled a sentence contained in the book, the history of Poland created after World War I remains without a final chapter. Millions of Poles are at home and abroad trust and pray that the last chapter will be brought to the victorious end in the Polish millennium, which we will celebrate in, the, in a few years. Commenting of these words, Gomułka conti continued. Professor Halewski, who wrote this book in 1958, believed that by 1966, the social system in the European countries would collapse. He doesn't say which way. He does not rule out, but rather assumes that will be liberated through a war cataclysm. He also recalled Halecki's words about the role of the Catholic Church, which, according to him, is, is for Poles, both a national heritage and a link with the Western world, and has become the most powerful stronghold of moral and spiritual resistance in the current period, period of oppression. He commented on them as follows. Here you have the political creed of Professor Halec, teacher of the authors of the letter to the German bishops and the authors of the Roman communique. When his book is to a signpost that serves the bishop, the reactionary part of the Polish Episcopal. They would like to leave Poland along this line. Pomuka's speech initiated a wave of critical in his scientific achievements in the Polish press, both daily and periodical. Paradoxally, and the Scientists who, whose name was known in Poland only to some historians and a small part of the intelligentsia with a pre-war origin. Thanks to Gomuka's speech found his way into most dailies and the most widely read weekly magazines. The motive of most publication was the anachronism of the historian's work, which press readers in Poland could not have known. 
And so two days after the press published the speech of the uh, first secretary of the Central Committee of the Polish United Workers Party, a review of Historia Polska was published in the National Day in City Warsaw, Life of Warsaw, by the journalist of this magazine, lawyer and soci sociologist Jan Gursk. Emphasizing Halski's erudition in the field of, of words on the Jagiellonian era, he expressed surprise why the bishop preferred to an emigre historian, even for many researchers professing Catholicism work, work in Poland. He further stated that despite Halski's declaration that he never practiced political propaganda, the last chapter of his work concerning the period after 1945 is an illustration of vulgar propaganda and political activity subordinated to clear intention. He also considered the bishop's recommendation of Halewski's book as a gesture of political disregard for the Polish state. The further criticizing Halewski for not taking into account the scientific achievements of the post-war period, Gorski deepened the thesis formulated by Gomułka writing. Whoever does not understand the contemporary situation of his own country, finds it difficult to grasp the driving forces and leading tendencies of history. As a result, the intellectual naivety of Professor Halecki's work is more reminiscent of historical prophecies and Sunday school than of historical science. However, this is not the naivety of a child, but a political conspirator who, helpless in the face of contemporary history, cannot understand its sources, but can become angry at history. The most serious criticism of the anachronism of Halecki's work was in the bi-weekly literary magazine Uczesność, which published three articles of Halecki's History of Poland, written by three renewed historians closely associated with the authorities of the Polish People's Republic at that time. Medievalist Professor Marian Małowicz, historian of law and modern history Professor Bogusław Lechniedorski, and the researcher of modern history Professor Czesław Madajcz. They were published under the common title History, Anachronistic, and Modern. All of them, within the scope of their specialists, criticized Halecki's history thesis, completely ignoring both the popular character of, of the work and this clearly declared character of the outline of political history. Primarily, the approach was criticized from the religious and political point of view, as well as the exaggeration and whitewashing of the role of the church. The most critical was undoubtedly Professor Mawowicz. Just of my digest review was striking in its cool tone and positive assessment of some Halecki's findings, although he, as he wrote about modern times, seemed predestined, predestined to use harsh assessment and, defi and definitions. In total, as a result of Gomuka's speech, 10 reviews of Halecki's work were published in the press in a short period of time, in the first quarter of 1966, including eight about history of Poland and two works, works on Opus Network. In addition, one biographical article was published presenting the scientist's profile in the weekly argument published by the Associ Association of Atheists and Free Thinkers. In this, in the, the author was Dr. Miroslav Wierzchowski, an employee of the Department of the History of the USSR and the Historical Institute of the Warsaw University. Reading this text, one gets the impression that its author simply translated the Anders Stalin's text from 1953 into the language of his era, expanded only by an, an analysis of some Halecki's publication. Therefore, it's, it, it talks about Halecki's landowner origins, his rehabilitation of the role of the nobility, cooperation with the central powers during World War I, and the glorification of Poland's eastern expansion. The final accent of the campaign against Halecki was a propaganda brochure published in April 1966 by the Committee of the Polish United Workers Party in Poznań Wojewodship, entitled The Attitude and Political Face of Oskar Halecki. Intended for the, for, for the party apparatus, it had a clear didactic and propaganda character. At the beginning, the attitude of the Polish immigration in solidarity with the Polish People's Republic was emphasized, supporting Poland's western border apart from a small handful reactionary Polish politicians. Oskar Halewski was described as a representative of the leading group of Polish immigration with an anti-communist attitude, who from the every beginning of, of beginning of his activity and at every opportunity takes 
and more irreconcilable position than other representatives of bourgeois historiography. To support the thesis, the following were cited among other fragments of an article by Janusz Stadler from 1953, basic and an outline of Alcharetsky's life and activities mainly on his findings. Starting in the spring of 1966, Halecki's name disappeared from scientific publication of the People's Republic of Poland. Among other things, it was not allowed to, the, to include Halecki's previous article in the selection of the statements of, by Polish historians from the period of the Second Polish Republic, Marian H. Sereis. Initially, the situation did not change due to the change of the authorities of the Polish People's Republic, with, which took place in December. 1970. It was probably only the, in the mid 70s that the censorship in the names of leading immigration historians, most of whom were already deceased, was partially lifted. As written in the book of records of recommendations of the Central Office of Press of Publication Control, in scientific and specialist work, memoirs and monographic works, the names, quotation, and discussion of the work of Oskar Halecki may be released without consultation. Only two years after Halecki's death, September 7, 1973, could an article by his student, Professor Janusz Pajewski, be published in the historical quarterly. Written with sympathy for the master, it contained a concise outline of his life and activities without an anachronistic view, also in relation to the immigration period. Pajewski noted that Halecki enjoyed great scientific authority in the West, gaining it with his enormous erudition, wide range of interest and outstanding research achievements. The last sentence of the memoir was also neutral and true in tone, in which Pajewski emphasized that uh, Halecki was a supporter of traditional European culture, an opponent of its development in, socialist, in a socialist direction, and a critic of Marxist historiography. In the, in the following years, until the end of the 80s, Halecki's names appeared as sporadically in the Polish scientist, scientific press. In 1981, his bio was published by Janusz Pajewski, and he also described the master quite extensively in his memoirs published in 1983. The return of Halecki's work to scientific interpretation in Poland after the change in the power system in 1988 was gradual and quite slow. The center that initiated the restoration of Halecki's memory was Lublin, especially the Catholic University of Lublin and Professor Jerzy Kłoczowski. It was here that the first reprints of Halecki's work were published, including Historia Polski, Lublin, London 1992, and then Polish editions of the books History of Europe, Its Boundaries and Division, Lublin 1994, 2000, 2002, and from the Union of Florence to the Union of Brest, Rubin in Rome, 1907. A broader reflection of Halecki's life and achievements was initiated in 1993 by Jerzy Kłoczowski and developed by Janusz Cisek after his return to Poland in 2000. Yeah. A significant impulse for, for this research was given by the Center uh, in Union on the initiative of Professor Małgorzata Dąbrowska. A lot of attention was paid to Halecki by a historian of historiography from which Professor Rafał Spiecki. The, the Warsaw, Warsaw Research Center, including Halecki's alma mater, the University of Warsaw, became interested in Halecki only after 2000. In 2013, the history of the Union, Union edited by Katarzyna Bochowska was published. Since 2008, the Oscar Halecki Award has been awarded in the historical book of the year competition. Therefore, it can now be said that after over 40 years of actual erasure from Polish historiography and culture, Oskar Halecki has been restored to, to, the, to memory in Poland. Thank you uh, very much for your listening. Uh,